So, exactly what are you looking for? I mean, I get that, uh, okay, he is flying around, causing some destruction, but there seems to be no uh, rhyme or reason to his path. Oh well, it looks cool, so it's good, you know. That's the, the philosophy that usually goes. In Final Fantasy, if it's cool, it's it's good. It doesn't have to be explained. It just has to be cool. It's good enough. Ah. I have never memorized what the lyrics to the songs Longing and Redemption mean. I usually just just enjoy them anyway. I mean, in the way that you can mindlessly enjoy a song without thinking about it too much. I guess I like the instrumentation. Call from uh, from an interview in a guidebook, or maybe it was a magazine, that uh, the original intent was uh, to have a ballad. I mean, as the as the theme song. The theme song ended up being Redemption. So yeah, very different from what was uh, originally intended. The, the development team essentially let uh, Gakt go wild with uh, his own ideas because w w once uh, you get a favor from from an artist, yeah, yeah you can't you can't make uh, demands. Just just let him go wild. Again, what forces are leading you, and where and why? I don't know, I'm just along for the ride. Even Vincent thinks this is getting silly. Anyone left? I don't think so. Hmm, interesting. The whole world has disappeared beyond us. But really, I can't blame the developers here. I mean, it would be so much work. Then again, if there was a single background... Okay, I can't judge if it would be too much work. I, sh I should have shown you just how bad Midgar looks in the earlier part of the level. It just looks weird and unfinished. Yeah, the bits that exist here, yeah, they look good. Looking good, Omega Weapon. You're not so bad, are you? You're just trying to destroy us all? But aside from that, yeah, you... You're probably the type to help play this across the street, aren't you? Okay, you, you're the type who destroys the street. Okay, bye.
some nice atmosphere here when it's when it's like like Omega Weapon is talking in some otherworldly language. Once more into the fray. <laughs> Critical hits zero. Magic costed D. Yeah. Because you get a higher ranking if you use magic and you get a higher ranking for critical hits. Except while in chaos mode, you well, well while in chaos form you can't use magic and you can't get critical hits. So what the game uh, demands of me is that I use the other weapons. Except I get a total ranking of S anyway, so it doesn't matter. In many parts, the rankings do not matter. There's no point in aiming for S ranking on everything. Ooh, this bit! Level 41! Oh, look at those stats! Obviously, the level 40 was not a cap. I reckon it's either level 50 or... Or 60. <laughs> we are close to maximum stats. That much is clear. Alright, let's buy some of that. Limit breaker not needed. If you use the limit breaker while in chaos form, uh, all I know that will happen is... Um, Chaos will shine a little bit. Aside from that, nothing happens. You can't transform into Galleon Beast while in Chaos form. So, uh, yeah. And we don't even need to sell you. And it wouldn't be the final boss without some imagery, imagery to, re to raise religious associations. Yeah, you'll see later what I mean with a vision of vice wrapped in a shroud. Uh, okay, over there. Crystal feelers. Oh no. They feel... They feel things up. They like to feel. I'm not... I'm not comfortable with this. And it closes. Thanks for trolling me. Ooh yeah. I don't think I defeated it, but the full death animation was not displayed. Your days of crystal feelings are over! Yeah, you can't, sh uh, you can't damage them by, by shooting. Oh, where are you? something happen and once I get there it will close ah it's teasing me it's feeling me and it's teasing me I do not appreciate this Come on. 
Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Hmm. Ah, yes, there we have it. I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel something... It reminds you of Renaissance Christian art, somehow. Oh no, it's Mother Brain! She has come here from the Metroid world to take over everything! And everybody keeps firing at me. Almost like I'm a threat. Jeez, I don't remember there ever being this many enemies. Uh, I might as well wail away because I think my HP will be restored in the next segment. If you could just let me shoot. Thank you. And the brain explodes. And now comes a fight scene with so many anime cliches, you will roll your eyes. Because really, it's, it's like you have seen this fight a million times before, if you've watched any anime. That said, I still enjoy it. Because I can. Movements are so complex, the eyes can barely follow it. I mean, I don't know about you, but I get the impression of Vice being in control here. And yet, he does not possess the proto materia. Yeah, this can be argued back and forth depending on how you interpret the, the limited proto materia and the. Uh, well, if even Omega Weapon is a, a creature to try and take control, maybe if Weiss is able to act somewhat freely while Omega Weapon is doing his own thing, I mean, yeah, yeah, it can be argued back and forth. I mean, when um, when a story doesn't have clear set rules. It's difficult to point out, point, out, point out where there is a contradiction in the plot, or where there's just not enough explanation. Final boss time! And I wish I had a turbo controller, just so I could hold down the R1 button and shoot endlessly, because... That's what you do. Oh, and uh, for those who were not in the chat earlier, I plan on showing some of the game's extra features once the main story is over. So I hope you don't mind that. The stream will not end immediately after the secret ending is shown. So those who stick around for that might end up seeing some some cool stuff. Yeah, I'm killing these things, but Wrapping up a kill chain doesn't seem to matter 
in this battle because I do the same amount of damage anyway. Ooh, better destroy this. I don't remember what they do, but it's not good. Oh, there's Vice! Not get to me. There is one attack by this boss that I have never found a solid way to avoid. This one where he essentially summons Meteor on me. The fucker. Yep, and it often ends up killing me. It's not fair. It's not fair. And now he goes apeshit. And tries to sweep me off. Ah yes, this is what happens when you use Limit Breaker. He just goes... Whoa! Animation! I think I think he's actually stronger for a while. Oh wow! Did I, did I see that right? Did I cause 4000 damage? I don't know. Wow! The damage just increased with every shot there when Limit Breaker was activated. This was entirely new to me. You discover something with each new playthrough and in this one I've discovered a number of things. Just awesome. Just awesome. And Vice, you... You are defeated. Cue the final cutscenes. But first, we are going to get ranked! What is our performance during this game? I think I'll either get an, a B ranking or an A ranking. Well, I'll certainly get A ranking. Yep, A. 10 hours and 11 minutes. And, uh, yeah, times KO'd. I died one time as Kate Sif during the Metal Gear Solid segment. I believe I can fly I believe I can touch the sky I believe I can live with the live stream Take the life and fly away To the stars beyond Omega's ascending But that would mean Where is Iron Man when we need him? Tony Stark Use your armor! This can end like the Avengers. Except you Reeve and not Tony Stark. And you didn't... Oh yeah, that makes sense. Never mind. <sighs> Alright, there's uh, a section of the Shinra building that was destroyed in Advent Children, but it's present now in Dirt of Cerberus. Right. Midgar restored itself. Somehow.
And now they get a Mako shower. And the same thing happened in Before Crisis, after Zirconia was defeated, so Midgar gets quite a lot of Mako showers. And every Final Fantasy has to end with us wondering if the main character is dead. Remember when um, that happened in Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX? And when Cloud almost died in uh, Advent Children? And now here with Vincent in Dirt of Cerberus. The game is not complete without it. But yeah, that gets annoying sometimes. You just know the character survives. Composer Masashi Hamautsu. Ah yes, Minoru Akko, sound programmer. He also made the sounds for the original game. The original Final Fantasy VII. So there are some uh, some names, some of the original staff. That you might not pay attention to, but who appear in both these products. So yeah, these are the ending credits. Not sure what to say about them. They are rolling. Apparently the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra helps with the music. I wish you could unlock the music video for the, the Redemption music video in this game, but sadly you can't. Robin Atkin Doe's does the voice for G in this game. The guy we will see in the secret ending. Well, Genesis, you all know it. And the guy who does this vo his voice in this game, well, he doesn't seem to have done anything else. I looked him up on, my, on IMDB and he is some very obscure individual. Not much info on him. But he makes me think, uh, you, you'll hear it later on, but his voice there, it sounds a bit like Antonio Banderas in, um, uh, right, what is it, yes, uh, Interview with a Vampire, the one with Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, you know. So all I can think here is, oh, it's Antonio Banderas at the end of DC. <laughs> REDEMPTION! And there the Shera is lying. It actually took me a long time. I, I didn't notice it myself that the Shera was there. I had had to be pointed out to me. But it makes sense of course because Shalua's capsule is there with the Mako drop coming down and the game leaving it ambiguous whether she survives or not. In an interview it was said that yeah, if Dirge of Cerberus was successful, Shalua might appear in a sequel. And that never happened. Surprise! <laughs> Vincent. It has been almost a week since that day. The life stream has returned to the planet and has begun to flow normally once again. And I have started to fill the There's so much one could 
pick apart over here. You can't see it in this recording, in this stream, but one of those, uh, well, it's, it's not, not all the paintings, but uh, yeah, the boards on the wall, one of them shows the original Seventh Heaven from the original game. So if you have a high quality uh, snapshot from this bit, you can you can spot it, as well as some other uh, stuffs on the wall. Or at least started to try. I've learned so much in the past weeks. Now that I realize I'm not alone, I think. I may be a little stronger. Hmm. She went through the same arc as Cloud. She realized at the end that she was not alone. Have you heard from Cloud? Mm -hmm. He hasn't found anything. Oh. Ain't gonna make this easy for us, is he? According to an interview, Shelk was drinking tea here. Do you remember? I always assumed she was drinking coffee. The last words we exchanged. Do you remember our promise? Your promise to Lucrezia. Right, to tell her that... Uh, what was it? That she always only believed what she wanted to believe. And somehow that was important. I, I don't know. This part is vague to me. But I have to try. I have to believe. You have to believe! I've learned. You must never give up hope. You have to believe! So, she doesn't drink coffee, she drinks tea. I don't think I like Shelk anymore. Come on, coffee is the way to go. Tea drinkers. <laughs> I don't mean it, of course. Omega and Chaos have returned to the planet. Okay, but aren't you going to tell her that she always believed only what she wanted to believe? You were... Okay, you said that maybe you will say it. So you didn't end up saying it, or did you say it before this scene? And there she cries, again. She has learned nothing! This scene is very appropriate, actually. We spent half the game inside this cave. In flashbacks or in mind projections. And finally, he walks out. In this sense, the final scene here works very well. Because they now, now ship Vincent with Chuck. Because they are sick that way. <laughs> Not that I mind, though. Of course you don't. You're used to the internet. You found so many, so much sick stuff on the internet. With your SND abilities. Hmm. I sure hope that thing doesn't fall on anybody's head. And that's the ending of the main story. There is one secret ending left to watch. And after that, I will show some of the game's extra features. So beware, it's not over yet! You have to suffer more of Dirt of Cerberus! No! Actually, it's quite cool. And yet again, I think this is right below Sector 7. And 
and here we have real life Gact interacting with CG environments. I always thought that he projected his own shadow there, but in fact it's the mist that's parting away while he walks. Also, he's Jesus! He walks on water! Oh my god, Gakt is Jesus! This almost works with real life gakt in this scene. It almost works. It is not yet time for slumber. We still have much work to do. My brother. Yes, we have to go suck some blood. Blur. Really, he sounds like a vampire. And then Vice says to Genesis, You forgot my swords down there! Okay, I'll fly back! He really does make me think of a vampire at the end. <laughs> ah, yes! The main story is over. Now, just a quick look at what the extra features have to offer, because we have an event viewer, character viewer, sound gallery, art gallery, extra missions. Of course we won't look through everything, but I have something in mind for the event viewer. Because on the Shera we missed scenes with Reeve. In the, in the scene here, with Kate Sif, he will say Number 5 is alive in this version of the scene. But, if you performed really bad in the Metal Gear Solid segment, he will instead say, in, instead say Number 6, ready for action. So, that's an easter egg. So what he's saying here is that, yeah, the, the Kate Sif you controlled in the, in the sneaking segment is still alive, apparently. Uh, so yeah, and number five is alive is apparently a reference to a movie. I forgot the title of it. today. <laughs> Headquarters was pretty much destroyed by the deep ground forces. But I was able to salvage a few things. Number five is alive! Tell me, Reeve. <laughs> Who's backing your operation? Scrooge McDuck. Actually, I'm not sure. Scrooge McDuck. I've only met with a representative. Donald Duck, the representative. However, the WRO is crucial for this planet's survival. All oh, right, you were hippies with guns. I forgot. <laughs> I'm not concerned with the reasons this person has for helping us. As long as he continues writing checks. Though... I have a feeling it is probably someone who believes he is in debt to the planet. Yep, it's Rufus Shinra. It's Rufus Shinra. It's Rufus Shinra. The game is pretty much yelling it at us. It's Rufus Shinra. Things are gonna get really nutty really soon. Why can't things go Nutella instead of nutty? I mean, come on, Nutella. It's like the life force of everything, Nutella. 
Dirge of Cerberus International is very kind to grace us, grace us with scenes from the Play Online mode, which existed for only six months before it was discontinued. <laughs> the scene names are incredibly boring here, but if you um, play the game with um, with the console in a Japanese settings, you will find well more descriptive names for the scenes. And uh, let's see which scene did I want you to see? Because yeah, I won't bother with explaining the entire plot, but essentially it's about the deep ground soldiers when they were controlled by the so-called restrictors so that they wouldn't break free from their constraints and uh, the Tzviets manipulate the player the player character so that they can break free and defeat the restrictor And I choose this scene because there's a decent fight scene in it. As you'll notice, the voices and the text is in Japanese. That is all we can get. There is no way to watch these scenes in with English voices. Though because the game, the console is set to English, the written speaker names here for the Tsviet are in English. So that's the only text change depending on the settings, the language settings of your console. Alright, look, it's Yoshi Yoshimitsu from Tekken! And here we have Shelk manipulating the player character to believe that the restri restrictor killed the player character's sister. But we will recognize that this is in fact Shelk's sister, Shalua. Shelk is cruel enough to plant her own memories into the player character so that the player character will be motivated to defeat the restrictor. And it's a much more complicated part of the plot to explain just why the player character is needed to defeat the restrictor and why the Tsviets can't. I won't bother with that. Prepare for copy techniques! So, like most of the fight scenes in Dirt of Cerberus, the choreography makes it so you can't tell at all times what's going on. But, man, it's decently cool. So, yeah, enough of that. 
nothing interesting to see past that point. Uh, let's see, is there anything else we want to show here? I mean, this event viewer is quite incomplete, because you can pick a scene, play it, and then you are brought back to this menu. There is no way to autoplay chapters. This is very annoying. Also, there are some scenes missing. And here in Edge, two scenes are misplaced. Like the sniper scene here should be before the meeting with the boy. The order is wrong! Yet another item on the list of things to correct in a re-release of Dirge of Cerberus that will never happen. And was there anything else? I don't think so. Oh! I just want to show a costume here. I think it was the scene 6. I mean, look at it! It's a transformer, essentially, with a chocobo head! That is so weird and awesome. Why couldn't we dress up Vincent with a chocobo head during the game? That would have been fun. Let it be an accessory. We really missed out on some good costumes by not getting the online game. So, that's enough of the scenes. I just want to talk a little bit about the extra missions. I mean, the art gallery and everything has what you would... and character viewer has what you would expect. Some of you may have played Crisis Core, which I don't remember how many extra missions it has, if it was 200 or 300 or whatever it was. But all the missions there are the same. Except for one or two. Find the enemy, the, well, the boss of that area, and defeat it. That's all there is to it. Dirge of Cerberus with its extra missions is way, way better. Because the missions are actually diverse. Somewhat diverse in their design. It can be to defeat 100 enemies. It can be to survive... Well, uh, yeah, uh, missiles being shot at you. It can be playing as Kate Sif, where here you have to defeat 100 enemies, or in uh, another uh, Kate uh, stage here, right, you have to defeat Rose of the Crimson, Crimson using Kate Sif. It's hilarious. And the same with Kate Sif versus Azul, and later Kate Sif versus Vice. It's hilarious. And sometimes you have to find your way in a labyrinth. Finding ways to survive, and you really have to learn how the stage is built, where, uh, how you have to clear it. In Crisis Core, there is not that element. In Crisis Core, your only strategy is to, okay, run alongside the walls, so you don't trigger fights. That is all there is. Here, you have to re replay missions and learn how they work. And it's very satisfying once you figure out how to play them. There are a total of four to six missions, I think it was. And my absolute favorite is two-handed. I will show you why it is my favorite. And we are good on time. We are good 
on time. The object objective is to defeat 100 enemies. Hello, there is Shalua. By talking to her, you get card key and medals. Gigas X medals. And the jukeboxes here are used to unlock features such as Katesif, who runs around giving you items. And you can unlock multiple Katesifs even, who will run af uh, after you and give you items and also strike enemies. They don't do any damage, really. Well, not much. But they are still there. It's fun. <laughs> no, I want handgun bullets. In extra missions, you begin with the equipment you had at the end of your last playthrough. So I have all the equipment. Ultima weapon, mana soul. I have everything I could want. If you don't have ultima weapon, then this stage can help unlock it for you. The first time I played the stage, I actually had never even heard of Ultima Weapon in this game. So when I unlocked Ultima Weapon, it was a huge surprise. And the other surprise, as we will see shortly, well not shortly but soon, uh, is the mana heart item. Oh no, I mean the mana soul. Because this stage actually supplies you with the mana soul. And it is very appreciated. But now we start out with the best equipment, which makes the mission, this one and the other missions, all the more fun. We can breeze through them and achieve better and better clear times. Sure, the motivation, the motivation is small to actually complete the, uh, the missions fast, but it is there. The game does measure it. In Crisis Core, there is nothing like that. Nothing to motivate you that extra bit to find uh, well, a better way to clear a stage. Alright, most of the enemies we have to fight here are the Jewel Horns are super powerful. Defeating them makes them drop medals, which can be used to unlock features from the jukeboxes. And while this may look tedious now, I will soon show you how the tedium is amended. If I wasn't using Ultima Weapon right now, this would be oof, very difficult. Because the jewel horns are so powerful. Like, so powerful. This was the game <laughs> that made me scared of jewel horns. Because you will find the jewel horns in other missions and they can just wreck your shit. Especially when you're not prepared. These enemies appear in Crisis Core as well with pretty much identical models. But you don't have as much reason to feel afraid of them. And when a game makes you feel scared, like a good scared, you know it has done something right. So these are the good parts of Dirge of Servers that most people won't see, because it takes... It takes so much work to get all the good equipment, to get through all the missions, to, un to unlock all the extra missions even. Because you can only unlock one at a time by completing one mission. So I perfectly understand why most people have not completed everything in this game. Most have not completed it like I have. I hope I find the correct juke, uh, jukebox now. I may 
take the wrong one. Well, it was the wrong one, but there's one nearby, and I think it's the correct one. We will soon be at a point where I can show some more exciting elements of this mission. Oh, come on! Come here! Come here, boy! Come here, boy! Come play with me! Come play shooty-shooty! Shooty-shooty in the facey-facey! see how many I have eight it should be enough it should be enough hmm this might be the one where you actually unlock Ultima weapon yep this is where you find Ultima weapon so if you have not upgraded the model gun before Ultima weapon may well be a surprise for you. But I'm here with you, telling you all the important details of this game, so it is no surprise to you the existence of the Ultima weapon and how to get it. Thanks, Kate. Your help is very much appreciated. I won't sh uh, show it right now, but up here, there is a jukebox that, when activated, causes an air raid. Missiles will just fill the landscape and defeat all the enemies for you. It is so, so very satisfying. And... Uh, Learning the timing of when to summon the air raid is very important because at one point in this stage Arch Azul will appear Yes! Yes, I found it! I think Um, okay, I don't know what just happened But it was supposed to make me run faster. Because that's really what I'm looking for. The... Ah, darn it. I don't know what's going on. I thought it was going to make me run faster. I apologize for not being quicker with showing you the cool bits. Once I get to where I want to be, you will understand why this is all worth it. Another Kate Stiff, thank you for that. Oh no, my audience. I'm losing my audience. Quick Kate Stiff, perform a dance number. I need to entertain my audience before it's too late. Maybe. Yeah, it should be this one. I mean, it has eight. We are getting close, people. I will soon no longer annoy you with boredom because I'm getting close to my goal thank you Katesif for causing those thunder bombs oh shit 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 fuck <laughs> That's magic, bitches! You can't hurt me! Okay, come on, let this be the right one. I want this to be the right one. Yes! 
Let's see. I now run across the plains like a deer on a grassy field. And this, my friends, is when the mission feels extra fun. You can outrun anything. You can very easily even outrun Azul when he appears in his transformation. Oh, and here! I may not have enough medals, but this is the point of the card key. Remember, Shalua gave us a card key earlier. Why might she have given us that? Alright, only one more medal. One more medal. Come on! Oh yeah! Shelk! What are you doing here? I was so scared when she first appeared because I thought, oh no, I've summoned the boss. But no. Ooh, Archazul! Hmm. You appeared sooner than I wanted. But that's okay. Let's see. Because I'm cool. I am cool and I can outrun anything. That's really the key to this mission. Well, one of the keys to this mission. Uh, to unlock the, fa uh, the, uh, the fast running before our Chasul appears. You can survive without it, I have done that, but it's more fun to play this mission with super speed. I'm having so much fun. I hope some of it translates to my audience. This, my friends, is how you find enjoyment in Dirt of Cerberus. The patience to play through it and find all the good bits. And of course, to have fun at the expense of the game. <laughs> Looking at all the ways in which the writing is bad. And enjoying some parts that are good. Oh shit! He's firing stars at me! He's all fabulous now! It's the Eurovision! Yes, keep chasing me, Azul. I will land hell... Uh, f yeah, I will rain hellfire upon you. You will regret the day you stood up against Shademp. Come on! Haha! <laughs> and you know what the good part here is? The missiles won't hurt me at all. They will only hurt my enemies, but they will not hurt me. Come on, Azul! Get down and play! Because there is a risk you won't actually be hit. Come on! Come on! Yes! Oh, damn it! He actually avoided it! Well, that's what happens when you don't have everything planned perfectly. So I'm just going to kill you myself. Because I'm badass that way. Thank you! Ooh, ten medals, even. So you see, this mission may start out slow, but as you progress, it just becomes more and more fun. Oh, it's so cool to have Shelk alongside you. You really wish there was a segment like this in the original, in, in the main game. I mean, sure, she barely does anything. But she's there. She's there. And look what happens here. They talk. Silently.
Yes, yes, I get it. I wanted to show her little dance, but I didn't get to. A dance where she then gives me mana soul. So, yeah, she just spun around her EM sabers a bit. Still, I mean, they're united! The family is united! Look! Look at their dead faces! Their dead happy faces! They're together again! Yay! Family! It's so happy! Oh, jeez! I didn't know the X-Metals faded away like that. Oh well. I think you can actually make Vincent run even faster. I could be wrong. He runs fast enough, <laughs> so it's cool. Hmm, I think you have to find the exactly correct spot to unlock them. Oh yes! On a line! Just for me to kill! So I hope I have shown that I have managed to show just why this extra mission is my favorite. I mean, it has multiple Katesifs. You can run super fast. You are shown all the, the best equipment of ult Ultima Weapon and Mana Soul. You get to reunite Shalua with Shelk. I mean, see... I mean, we don't uh, s get any text, we don't get any voices. But knowing the story of the game, it feels... It feels relevant, it feels important to see them reunited like that. I don't think I have... Ooh, nice. I don't think I have anything else to show. Ah, just for the heck of it, I can call upon an air raid. Because I'm resourceful like that. It's strange that a deep ground airship comes to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Full damage. Sure, there is a, a, not actually a, a damage cap like that in this game, but it's cool to see those numbers. And the missiles can't hurt me. Haha! <laughs> I'm invincible. So, I suppose you don't have any more surprises for me? No? Hmm. I'm trying to think if there is any other mission worth showing anything at all of. But I don't think so. Woo! So fast! Gotta go fast, gotta go fast! When we reach 80 defeated enemies, we'll call this mission Quits. Because I like round numbers, and I like round things. I also like square things, like Square Enix things. Uh -huh. Come 
Come on, summon the enemies for me. So yeah, there's some tedium in that, uh, not uh, knowing exactly where you have to go to unlock all the enemies. Yep. All the jewel horns up here are defeated. You will be my last victim. And with that, we end. We end, well, the whole thing. Because believe me, we do not want to go through the tutorial segment. <laughs> Because there is a segment where you get to play as Turk Vincent and uh, get a game mechanics explained to you. And it's slow and it's boring. So we are not going through that. And so, with that, I'd uh, yet again like to thank everybody who joined. This was. Uh, actually a way easier experience than I thought it would be. I thought that playing for such long periods, I mean multitasking with looking at chat rooms and talking, I thought it would be more difficult, but I know this game so well. I know Final Fantasy VII so well. So a lot of the time yeah, there's I can autopilot a, a great deal of the gameplay. I had a great time, and I hope you who listen to me also had a great time. So, thank you, thank you all yet again. And with that, I will end the stream. Bye-bye.